So do you wanna build yourself a macOS virtual machine? We're gonna be using VMware ESXi, which is VMware's ESXi hypervisor platform. We're gonna be showing you how to grab your macOS installer, converting it into an ISO file that you can then boot and create your own VM. Super cool, we're gonna be covering that today. Hey, my name is Emilio. I release videos every single week on all things tech. So do remember to subscribe, clicking on the button and on the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future video releases. So if you're running VMware ESXi, you maybe already built yourself some Windows VM, some Windows servers, some Windows 10, Windows 11. You've maybe built some Linux, I'm gonna download and show you how to download the Mac OS installer file, then converting it to an ISO, then logging into our VMware ESXi host and then creating our own VM out of macOS. See, we are on our macOS, we're on Monterey here. And a couple of things, we've got our applications. We've downloaded this big file over here called install macOS Big Sur. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be converting the macOS Big Sur installer, the app file, into an ISO. So then you can use that ISO for whatever you want. It could be to build a virtual machine. It could be for whatever other purposes you wanna open it up on a Windows machine. So the first thing you need to do is, of course, you need to download the actual installer file itself, all right? That's the very, very first thing that you need to do. And the easiest way to do this is to go into the App Store over here, and we're gonna search for Mac OS. There is my installer, and you click on Get. Of course, you're gonna be using a different macOS if you're downloading Monterey or a different version of macOS. It should be listed and you can just download it. In this case, this is quite a big file. If we have a look at the size of it, the size of this is 12.47 gig. It is quite large, okay? Once you've got it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the terminal window. Let's just close out of this. This is the terminal window. If you need to access this, you can go into your applications area on your Mac, go down to utilities, and you've got terminal listed in here. And essentially it's just a command line interface uh, allowing you to put in specific commands. And this is the place where you actually need to convert or put in some commands to convert our app file. And what we want to ensure is that this installer file is within your applications folder in your finder. So if it's not in here, put it into there first. So here is the first command right here. It's gonna be creating essentially a temporary DMG, and then you're gonna mount that DMG on your computer. Now I'm calling this Big Sur, so it's gonna be calling it based on what my operating system is, but you can really call that whatever. TMP is just that, that it's gonna be a temporary location, uh, but Big Sur will be the name. Then the size, now I wanna give this a relevant size. It's essentially, it's creating a container for me to then be able to put my actual installer file. So make sure that it's big enough. I've made it 15 gig. Uh, and I've called this Big Sur right there. That's my volume name and everything else should be okay. So I'm gonna press enter. There you go, it's now created it. There it is, created forward slash TMP forward slash Big Sur dot DMG. So in this path, it's created this DMG file, which at the moment is empty. There's nothing on it. Now the next step is now to actually mount that DMG file. So we're gonna put in this command right here. Okay, it's gonna mount Big Sur dot DMG. And all this is gonna do is just really open it up and mount it to my computer. You actually see that on my desktop, it's right there, Big Sur. Here is the mount itself of my DMG. If I open it up, it's actually empty because there's nothing in it yet. We've just created the container to be able to now put in the actual application installer. You now need to go and create the actual installer and put it into that mounted drive. And this is the command that we want to use right here. So what this command will do is it's using this super user, just gonna ask you for your password, but essentially it's going to now navigate to the applications folder the applications folder being right here on my uh, finder. And of course, my file is this one, install space macOS space big space sir. And that's what I've passed right here. So install backslash space macOS space, etc. right? So you do the backslashes before the spaces. So make sure that you put that in accordingly, depending on the names. So you'll need to change this if you're using Monterey, for example put the name of Monterey with the relevant spaces. Uh, and then it's telling me to use the volume, Big Sur, which is one that we just created. And we're just putting a space right up to here. So that is the full command right there. Press enter. It's gonna ask me for my administrator password. This is the administrator password on your Mac. Ready to start, to continue, we need to erase the volume. Well, that's fine because there's nothing in there yet. If you wanna continue, press yes, and then return. So big uh, Y for yes and enter. There you go, copying data. So it's just erase it because there's nothing there. And now it's actually copying the data from that image from this actual app file into 
here. You can open it up, you'll see that there's already a file going in there, which is great. So just let's just let it do its thing. That is complete. You'll go all the way to 100% if everything works fine. Making disk bootable and then install media now available at that path. So if we open that up, you'll see that the actual app file is now within that actual DMG file that we had created. With that done, we can now just eject our object. It's now been ejected. We're gonna open up our terminal window again. So now we need to convert that DMG file into a CDR file or an ISO file, all right? So we've essentially grabbed that installer, the app file. We've created a DMG, we've copied it to the DMG. Now we convert it to an ISO. So this is the command that we're gonna run right here. So it's converting our temp file. This is our DMG, remembering that's the name. And we're gonna create on our desktop a big sir.cdr file. We press enter. That is now done, here it is. Let's right click and have a look at the uh, info. There it is, 15.73, it's an actual CDR file, which is really the same thing as an ISO. And then simply, what we're gonna do is just rename it to a ISO. So you can either rename it right from there, or we can just run this command, which is going to be doing that and converting it into that with an ISO, and we press enter. See that now on my desktop, that file has now been renamed to .iso. So with the ISO created, we now need to log into our ESXi host and upload that ISO into our data store. Now I will note that that is not enough, right? So if you're thinking of, okay, that's it, I can just now mount it. Well, what you'll find is when you mount that ISO, you get it's gonna go into a loop. It's gonna go into a consistent loop. There is some further steps that you now need to follow to actually get it working on ESXi. So here is my host, this is my ESXi host, and I'm gonna log in with my root credentials. So I'm gonna to navigate to my data store and I actually need to upload that ISO to my data store. Whatever data store you've already got on your ESXi host, I'm gonna be uploading it into this primary data store right here. I'm gonna right click on it and say browse. And now you want to navigate to a specific folder where you're gonna actually be uploading that ISO to. I've got this ISOs folder. You'll actually see that I've already uploaded that big sir.iso file. You know, if you're running Monterey, you'll upload that. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select upload and then of course I navigate to the location of that ISO. Select that ISO and then upload it directly into your ESXi host. That may take a little bit of time because it is a fairly big ISO, but then once it's in there, we then move on to the next step. The next step that I would recommend is now go and create your new VM. So I'm gonna select create, register VM, I'm gonna create a brand new virtual machine and next, I'm gonna give it an appropriate name. So I'm gonna say Mac OS VM. Of course you give it a relevant name for you and then you do your compatibility. If you don't know en enough about this, I've got other courses, other videos on specifically what this means, but I'm just gonna select the latest version for me. The guest, well, in this case, it's gonna be Mac OS. That's the OS family. And the version, well, it doesn't really matter necessarily because you can change a lot of this, but I'm just gonna select the latest version, which is 10.14. But of course, if you're running a different version of Mac OS, the process is gonna be the same, regardless of which version of Mac OS you are running. So whether that be Big Sur, Monterey, or a different version. Next, I'm gonna store that VM. So this is the location where the VM itself is gonna be sitting. I'm gonna store it on my big, I've got 3.56 terabytes on my big data store right there. Next, here is some pre-configured um, configurations for that VM. So now this is how much RAM, how much CPU, hard drive space do you wanna actually allocate to that VM? So I'm gonna actually give this, uh, just for now, I'm gonna give it four gig. We'll leave it as 40 and one CPU, but of course you can change all of this once your VM is built. The next step is I'm now gonna go into my CD DVD area right here, and I'm, and I'm gonna select data store ISO file. And I'm now gonna to navigate to that data store ISOs folder, and then my big sir.iso or your Monterey ISO. So whatever that ISO is, you select that and select that. So now that is listed in there, we can next finish. So now that's created just the shell, nothing's really happened yet, it's just the shell. Now from this point, if you start that VM, you'll see that you'll see the Apple logo and you'll think, great, it's just booting, but you, then you'll find it goes into a consistent loop. And that's because you need, you need to actually customize the ESXi to be able to allow you to install a macOS installer. Now I will recommend, don't do this in a production environment. I wouldn't recommend it, it's not supported really natively. So don't do this in a production environment. You can do this in a test, you can play around with it from a development perspective. If you want to do it in prod, it's up to you, it's your own risk, okay? Now from here, we're gonna to navigate to this website. 
So navigate to this website. I'll also throw that link in my description of this video. So you can just click on that. And what you need to download is this thing called a ESXi Unlocker. This is a file that's been created uh, to actually allow you to install this onto your ESXi and essentially patch your ESXi to allow it to actually read and execute and boot from that macOS ISO file. So go and download that zip file. I'm gonna to go to that location. I'm gonna download that zip file to my desktop. And then the next step is then to upload that zip file into my folder, the data store, the same folder that we've uploaded that ISO to. So I'm gonna navigate back to my primary data store right here. I'm gonna right click and say browse ISOs. And I'm now going to do upload and I'm gonna upload. And there it is. There's my unlocker.master zip and upload. You see that that is now listed right in there. Excellent, looks good. We close out of this. The next step is now to enable SSH on our ESXi host. So SSH will let you go into the command line of your ESXi host. If you're doing this on a Mac, you can use the terminal on your Mac. If you're doing this on Windows, you can use PuTTY on Windows, but then you're gonna use an SSH command to log into the IP address of your ESXi host. So in the host area on the very top left-hand corner, see so this is my host, I'm gonna go into manage, I'm gonna go into services, and I'm gonna find this one that says SSH. So I need to start SSH. Now generally what I'd recommend is once this process is done, you stop SSH. You don't wanna generally allow SSH to be always open. So SSH allows me to now connect to the command line, the back end essentially of the actual ESXi host. Now from there, I'm gonna open up my terminal window and I'm gonna connect it via SSH to my ESXi host. Here is my terminal window. I'm gonna now type in SSH root and then at and then the IP address of my ESXi host. Okay, so make sure that it's SSH root and then the IP address of your host and click on enter. It's gonna ask you for the password. This is the same root password that you use to log in to this GUI, right? to connect to that host. All right, now we're logged in. Now this is essentially a command line interface. This is a, what's called a CLI and it's using Linux. Unix essentially is the back end. So you need to understand a little bit about those commands, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in an LS. LS is, you know, shows you the directories and I'm gonna now connect to this uh, folder here called VMFS. So I'm gonna do change directory, CD space VMFS, enter. If I look at that again, I'm gonna now do change command to volumes, and then I'm gonna have a look in there again. And there is my data store. You'll see that there's a two data store, so I'm gonna need to connect to that same data store where my actual zip file was uploaded to. All right, and then of course I had my ISOs folder, and that's where it went. Okay, there are all my ISOs along with that zip file that you can see. Now I'm gonna write a command unzip, esxi-unlocker-master.zip. That is the name of that installer file and press enter. So that will now unzip that file and it's already done that. So I can do an ls again to have a look. You'll see that by running an ls command to list my location. Here is a brand new folder that's just been created, esxi-unlocker.301. Now we need to actually change the permissions on this folder to, me, to be able to allow me to run a command that is inside there. So I'm gonna run this command right here. I'm actually changing the permissions to 775. That is the command right there and enter. And now I wanna navigate inside that folder. So I'm gonna change directory into that location, enter. And that's the contents of that folder. In here, we're gonna do a dot forward slash ESXi install dot sh. Okay, so that is a command that we now need to run. And this is actually gonna install that script on your ESXi host. Remember, you are patching your host. So I recommend don't do this in a prod environment. And press enter. Okay, so if everything looks good, it should now say success. So it's acquired, it's copied, it's editing and it's now says success and please restart your server. So you now need to restart your server. You can do that from here by just typing in reboot or you could just right click on your host and actually reboot it that way as well. Of course, any VM that is running on your host will be stopped. So make sure you stop any VMs if they are anything important. Host is now back up, I'm gonna log back in. Now what I like to do is I'll reestablish my connection and connect via my command line again. 
And the reason I do this, I like to test to see whether the patch was successful. So there is another command you can do, dot forward slash ESXi SMC test dot SH and press enter. And that is good. If it says SMC present equals true, it means that that patch has been successfully installed. If it does not say true and it says false, that means the patch is not installed and you have to go and try that process again. Now with that done, let's just go back to our virtual machine. And now let's boot it on, power on and console so we can see what's going on. And I'm now presented with my Apple logo and then we should be able to start installing macOS. Looking good. Now remember if your macOS is going into a loop, you'll have to go and reinstall that patch because that patch is the essential piece to make sure that all of this works. Now one final step is you now need to go into the disk utility, click on continue, make sure you are highlighting your VMware virtual SATA hard drive media. This is the same size that you would have set. In my case, it was 40 gig, yours may be a different size. Select arrays, I'm gonna call this Big Sur. You give yours a relevant name, Monterey, whatever it may need to be. Arrays, done. We're out of disk utility. Select install Mac OS, continue and agree. And there's the hard drive listed. We can now select continue. And there you have it, Mac OS. So Mac OS is now running as a virtual machine. It is brilliant. So remember to click on the subscription button. I release videos all the time. So make sure you stay up to date by clicking on the button and on the bell. Do what you do by liking and commenting as well. Let me know whether this worked for you or whether if it didn't work for you. But that's it. Thanks so much for spending the time. We'll talk to you next time.